Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Building Demand and Completing More Apps with Continuous Omnichannel Engagement. My name is Colleen Mannion, Senior Manager of Demand Gen at RNL, and I will be your host for today's webinar. I have a few housekeeping notes to go over before we get started. First, if at any point you experience technical difficulties joining the WebEx, please dial the number located in the chat box. As an attendee, you are automatically muted on entry, and by default, your audio will stream through your computer. If you would prefer to dial in, please click on the telephone icon located on the participant panel. And I encourage you to ask questions throughout today's webinar by submitting them in the Q&A panel on the right side of your screen, and we'll have time at the end of the webinar to answer your questions. And just one final reminder that you will receive a recording and slides of this webinar via email. With that, I will go ahead and turn it over to your first presenter for today, Kayla Manning. Kayla? Hi, thank you all for having us today and joining us on this webinar. We are very excited to be here. I'm joined with Gail and I'll allow him to introduce himself in just a few moments. Um, but I am Kayla Manning. Um, I oversee our digital marketing strategy and work closely with all of our um, adult online and graduate um, um, program products. Um, as well as our recruitment and engagement products. So I'm very excited to be here. I've been in higher ed for about 10 years now, maybe going on 11 if I do the math correctly. And I'm um, really excited to talk a little bit about um, engaging with prospective students um, and building demand with your online engagement. Um, and I'll give that to uh, let Gil introduce himself now before we start um, diving into the presentation. Yes, hello everyone, and thank you, Kayla. Uh, I will say that presenting on RNL webinars is, is where dreams come true. Uh, getting to present with, uh, with <laughs> Kayla today is a really exciting opportunity for me. Um, I, the, my name is Gil Rogers, I'm the SVP of Marketing Strategic Partnerships for Platform for Education. Uh, I've been here for about, uh, just over a year. Uh, I've been in the higher ed, uh, ed tech space and the consulting space for about 10 years. Uh, and prior to that, I was on the institution side uh, at two private schools in the Northeast University of Hartford and the University of New Haven, both in Connecticut. Uh, so I'm excited to be here today to, to, to talk about, you know, how we get the most out of our demand gen strategies by layering new opportunities on top of those legacy plans that we've been, we've been building and might be looking at refreshing uh, for, the, for the next year. So excited to be here. Thank you, Kayla. Great. Well, why don't we go ahead and dive in? All right, so on today's agenda, as we're talking about boosting demand um, and making sure you have an omni-channel approach to your engagement with students, we want to cover what we know about today's pers uh, prospective students, as well as important shifts in student engagement. We'll also cover the evolution of online marketing strategies, new communication channels to consider, and then also key challenges and recommendations. So what do we know about today's perspective, perspective students? We know that the way they engage with us has greatly evolved over the years. I think a lot of that comes into play because of cultural shifts and technology gains and um, the access to information that we have. Um, but regardless, when we're thinking about how this engagement has evolved, we aren't just talking about a one single audience. We aren't just talking about the undergraduate audience. We're talking about um, the undergraduate audience, the graduate audience, the international audience, the transfer audience, the adult learners, the list can go on and on. Whatever your audience is, engagement really plays an important role for the audience um, in their education decision. So it should be a top priority for you for when you're thinking about how to engage with them. So what shifts have we seen culturally that are really affecting these engagement patterns? Well, one, the rise in consumer mentality. Students are now, and I'm totally using air quotes here, shopping by program and searching for outcomes rather than looking for specific schools. It's no longer just a systematic process that happens, but it really is a consumer mentality and just it matches the consumer behavior funnel as well, process in which they go through understanding, engaging, evaluating, and deciding on a specific school. There's also a need for speed. And I admit I'm very guilty of this. We live in a world where so much information is so easy to access and you can get so much at the tips of your fingertips, at the tips of your fingertips um, um, from a phone that we have this need for instant gratification for all things that we do. So prospective students have that same need. They want to know the information that they want to know when they want to know it. The world also revolves around me. Okay, so 
maybe doesn't revolve around me personally, but students want their experience with you to feel like it does revolve around them. They're really looking for engagement with an institution that feels personalized, customized, and catered to them personally. And they want to fill that connection with you from the very beginning and through um, graduation. But it is especially important in the entire funnel of engagement through the en enrollment and uh, management funnel to have that personalized experience with them. They also want to keep it real. Okay, so I'm not really sure if that's the cool lingo these days, so bear with me, but that's what we used to say, I don't know, 15 years ago. Um, but prospective students, they really want a genuine and authentic um, um, feel from your institution. So they want content that really feels like it's not just a script. It's not just, you know, the same response went to every student. So they want to get something from you that feels not only like personal and customized earlier, but also authentic with a natural voice that they can identify with and it doesn't feel like a sales process. Um, and then lastly, they want to be accessible and flexible. There's really a need for them to have access to you when they want to have access to you that's flexible to their own schedule. And this is making information available to them based on their needs. So what we're talking about here is really the mass customization of the prospective student experience at scale. Given this, obviously it sounds a little daunting, there's a lot that is involved, but there's a lot of things that you can do to respond to these shifts in order to be best prepare um, for your student engagement that lead you through the various channels and through the enrollment management funnel um, so that those students have that connection and that great experience with you. So let's explore a few of these options and how you would respond to these. First and foremost, responding to the rise in consumer mentality. I cannot stress enough the need for some level of digital engagement. With a 100% of students using digital learn more about your institution, optimizing your digital exposure is not only um, necessary, it is imperative. So, you want to do this not only across the different areas of the engagement funnel, but across the different channels that are um, available to you through digital means to make sure that you're really hedging your bets to ensure you're providing a good um, experience for all those prospective students, no matter where they are in their decision process, whether that's you know, from the beginning of becoming aware, working through and evaluating to when they're making their decision and starting to put in an application, and even beyond all the way through enrollment. Um, with this rise of that consumer mentality, um, search really now is the preferred method for their evaluation process. So once they've kind of been aware of you, they're going straight to searching for you and going to your website. In fact, 200 million Google searches happened in 2018, and this is specific to graduate programs, but I think this is a great way to just showcase the way people um, are searching. Of those 200 million searches, only 71% of them, or sorry, 71% of them were not branded, meaning that students are not searching for a particular school anymore. They're searching for particular programs. And this is really showcasing further the need for you to present information digitally about your program insights and your outcomes, helping them to understand what post-grad success looks like so that they can feel that they are making the best decision for the right program for them that meets their needs. All right. Since more and more students are looking to websites to do their research, obviously because you're digital, you've got a website, they're coming to you, we also need to respond to that need for speed. Um, you have to be able to provide them that quick information when they want it. Um, and of course, that quick inf information may not be at a time when, when you, know, you have somebody to readily pick up the phone. So, but it is easy to implement some instant chat and messaging opportunities that allows you to respond to that need for speed. The power of instant chat messaging really can um, allow you to be ex excessive and responsive to those student needs. Um, in our recent e-expectations report that's actually being delivered later this month, 73% um, of students that used instant chat or messaging said it was helpful. This number I find is really important because it's not just that people are using it, it's that when they are using it, they're finding value of it, which means they're gonna start talking about it and if they are talking to their peers, about their experiences and the engagement that they had through some sort of instant chat or messaging, they're gonna say, go check it out, go ask your questions, go, go have that interaction and engagement as well. 
So really by implementing live chat and making it student friendly, you're creating a communication process that helps move these students along to get answers in real time without them having to make that, I call it the dreaded scary phone call because students are not going to get on the phone anymore. So this gives them another avenue to engage with you. In response um, to a world that around, uh, revolves around me, um, let's talk a little bit about texting. Through text messaging, you really can keep, uh, uh, create a communication stream that keeps students engaged and fulfilling that, again, air quotes here, me, me, me mentality. Um, it's something that I think you guys are all uh, aware of and probably have seen more of, but there, it's, and I don't mean this in a negative way, I mean it in the sense of like, we want that. So providing short, simple text can really have a big impact on students and their sense of that personalized engagement um, experience with you. Um, in another recent poll, 80% of interest in students actually welcome, welcome text. And this is especially about the application process and post-admit updates. So texting can be a personal two-way engagement with prospective students to not only solicit interest in, the, in applying, but also provide reminders about completing application or enrolling or coming to a, a new student day or an upcoming webinar or a campus visit. There's so many opportunities once you're starting to engage with them to get them information at the, uh, right in their um, phone that allows them to proceed further down um, the enrollment management funnel. All right, keeping it real, Again, not, not sure if that's cool or not, we're gonna say it is today. Um, I know there's some rumblings um, about the decline of Facebook, but it's continuously cited as the best social network to learn more about a college. This coupled with the rise of overall users, Facebook and social networks really remain an important piece for engagement. And since social media is that go-to place for them to get a better understanding of campus culture, creating content that builds trust and value um, should be one of your key components of this to build that two-way social engagement plan. And what I mean by two-way is you should be encouraging students, both prospective and current students, to really utilize and interact with you via social, as well as you interact back, because that gives them that authentic, genuine voice of what they can expect with their experience, whether they choose to come on campus for a program or they choose an online program. So regardless of the modality, this really helps to keep it real and help them see that there are real people behind all of the operations that make a school successful. Lastly, um, uh, let's talk a little bit about live streaming. In response to being accessible and flexible, um, live streaming, streaming is really um, on the rise and it's a personal authentic engagement tool to connect live prospective students helping them better understand your campus. Again, it gives them a little bit of that authentic feel because it doesn't, you know, things are gonna go um, wrong and things are gonna go right and things are gonna go naturally over anything that's live streaming that isn't going to feel super rehearsed or done multiple times or, you know, um, too, too in the box. It's really going to allow them to sometimes in real time engage with you, but see what that looks like so that ultimately you can help them visualize themselves on that campus. As well as live streaming is really good because once it's um, recorded, you can also post it and continue hosting on your site so that based on the flexibility of students' needs, they can continue to access that information and learn about you and learn about how other students engage with you through a live streaming event, no matter what time they're looking at it. Up to almost 40%, over 17% of last year, live streaming is considered a great way to learn about um, uh, the campus. So at more than double from last year, you can see that students are relying on this more and more to interact and engage with you and better understand who you are as a campus. So I know these are all a bunch of um, great things that you can do to interact with the students to really provide them a, letter, uh, a level of you know, personalization, accessibility, authenticity, all of those things. Conduit is a specific platform that actually helps you facilitate all of these different um, areas and help make it a reality in a single platform that allows you a consistent and in institutional branded experience, leveraging the video, leveraging chat, leveraging text, leveraging that opportunity to connect with the students and do so in a way that is authentic to your voice and um, your institution. Again, all of this, regardless of your audience, really, really is important for those prospective students, for the 
um, to utilize as engagement tools, um, and really creating that personal on-demand experience. And uh, with that, and kind of highlighting all of the different areas in which you can engage, I'll turn it over to Gil, and he'll talk a little bit more about some of these important shifts in engagement. Awesome. Thank you, Kayla, and thank you for all that, that great insight. I think, you know, one area that you hit the nail on the head at the end, that this is regardless of audience, right? I think I see every every couple of days I see a tweet or a blog post about, you know, marketing to Gen Z and the playbook for Gen Z, and it, and I, I can totally respect that that's definitely the traditional undergrad audience that we're looking to approach and support. But most institutions, it's it's not just about the traditional undergrads. It's about all of the other audiences that you mentioned, the grads adult learners, transfers, internationals. But the, the one thing that's consistent about for, for all of these audiences is making sure that you have a continuous and consistent omni-channel approach that combines online engagement with some of the, what I, what I would call legacy or, or traditional forms of outreach. So what I'm gonna talk about today is, is, is kind of some of the shifts in how we've gathered data and some of the ways that and shifts that how students have engaged with our brands. And then we're gonna have some, some uh, reasonable and realistic solutions for supporting better students, better outcomes throughout the process. So, you know, diving in first, and, you know, this is nothing new or, or uh, should, shouldn't be shocking to anybody on the call, but, you know, 15, 20 years ago, even more, you know, there were a limited number of providers to go to to get your data, and that's how a lot of schools would start the, the top of their funnel. And for undergrad, it's, you know, College Board, ACT, and our CCUA. For grad programs, it may be GMAT, GRE, but there's, there's data sources that you put in the top of your funnel, and then if you have a good tracking year over year of, of conversions, the bottom of the funnel was somewhat predictive. Uh, I think what we what we know we know and everybody has felt over the past few years is that that's not that way anymore, right? The data providers are are still there and there's still a presence in the in the in the market and a prudent enrollment marketing plan may may consider having list purchasing be a component of that overall plan. But there's a number of other ways that students and schools are connecting, whether it's college search sites, you know, we're still traveling to reach students. There's digital marketing, like Kayla mentioned. There's, uh, you know, just Google search engine results pages have been enhanced to increase to to support the student experience. So, as a result of this proliferation of of resources at the top, the number of applications to generate a single enrollment has doubled over the past 15 years. Uh, so yield rates have, have dropped by about 50 percent, right? So even even with things like CRM systems, which are are meant to automate a lot of the process, the admission staff is still doing double the amount of work of 15 years ago with the same net result. And, and that's not sustainable, right? And, and one of the ways to fix that is to really plug in some of those holes in our funnel. And, and we know that, you know, students are going to stop and start throughout the process. They may not respond to everything that we do, but it's about having that consistent and continuous approach that covers all of the bases. Much like, you know, over the, uh, you know, over the past, you know, couple of decades, we've seen things like the consolidation of tools with, for communication and other activities. You know, everything an iPhone does today, 15 things we're doing 10 years ago, right? And so when, when we're thinking about the approach, one of the things we need to do is consider how are we reaching students through this channel as well. If, if their phone is now everything but a phone, uh, what are what are we doing to really evolve our strategy and, and reach students? So, you know, when we think about building effective strategies, one of the areas that's really important, whether it's everything Kayla mentioned above, from digital marketing, obviously text messaging and chat, social media, these are all ex accessed via via mobile devices. So it's building effective strategies to 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 use the phone in new ways. So you may still have a phone calling campaign as part of your your outreach but you should also have a digital marketing campaign. You should also have personalized videos for financial aid or um, enhanced caller ID or video programming that's, that's meant to be consumed on mobile. Uh, great example you see there on the, on the screen is Towson University did a uh, pre-orientation webcast that they delivered via text message to students with you know, key reminders once you get to campus, what to bring, what, where, where's parking, where's, where's check-in. And, you know, get excited about X, Y, and Z things that are happening, right? So having that be a part of your overall strategy and thinking beyond just the traditional phone call, email, letter, uh, which are still, again, part of an overall plan, but how do we evolve our strategies to, to, to ensure that the phone is being used in more, more uh, in, in less than less traditional ways, I should say. So, you know, moving into the evolution of online marketing strategies, what we're really talking about here, and like, I, like I've mentioned, is the, is the layering of, 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 stra of strategies, and I mentioned this at the beginning of the of the webinar today. You know, 
some of these things that you see on this on this continuing on this continuum of student engagement are things that are kind of the cost of doing business, right? The things that you know that we need to do as part of our plan. The challenge is, you know, as as things have evolved, you know, access to data has informed where we market our students, the frequency that we market to our students, the types of students that we should be, you know, acquiring during list purchases, the locations we should be traveling to. That means that we what we need to do is not necessarily stop doing things, but actually start just shifting where they're used in the process. It would be unreasonable to say, you know, stop doing things like travel, right? Students do appreciate a face-to-face -face experience, but maybe you don't visit every single high school in a specific state. You focus that on this, the conversion of, 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 of inquiries that have, that have come from those schools. You look at you know, all of the data that you have available for, for geodemographics and all the content to support your institutional, institution's health, right? So by shifting some of those strategy around, then you make room for additional things like advertising. You know, advertising was relatively new four or five years ago, and now it's part of nearly every marketing plan that I look at. It might be, not be housed in the admissions office, but the development office or the communications office is doing some form of, of digital advertising. Webcasting, social, social media streaming, and chats are where advertising was five years ago. I would say that institutions are starting to really think about how do we build a holistic process that includes these, these things to fill in the gaps between our on-campus events, off-campus events, uh, you know, open houses, preview days, application deadlines to support student engagement throughout the process. And what we've seen and observed for the institutions that get it and that do it right, amazing results throughout the process. You know, what we looked at is institutions that are aligning online engagement throughout their, their process and aligning it with their, their overall enrollment plans and priorities. We see conversion rates of up to 35% of additional, or on, on average, a boost of about 35% in inquiry to app conversion. So students who identify, raise their hand, say they're interested, applying at a higher rate. I would argue more, the more important number is the middle one, right? 26% of students, or a boost in 26% in application completion. You know, no student ever enrolled without completing the application, right? So we really, we really wanna focus on making sure that that number is, is strong. And then the last piece here being you know, a boost in about 7% inquiry to deposit yields. That full life cycle of being able to say, the students who, who indicate an interest, how many of those students actually enroll at the institution? And, it, and for, for many institutions that are on the call, um, you know, looking at the, the schools that have registered for the event, I, I think that you know, even, a, even a nominal 1% or 2% boost in conversion throughout the process could literally mean hitting or missing your class, could literally mean you know, millions of dollars of, of net tuition revenue for the institution. So the, this is not a nice to have, this is a strategic imperative to make sure that we're in a place where we're supporting better outcomes throughout the process. So, you know, yeah, to, you know, you, to, oh. sorry, I just want to add a point to that because I really love this slide and I love the information you share. I think you make a good point there that even a percentage or two here and there is definitely can make a huge impact. But you can imagine if you do this throughout the entire funnel and you have a percentage here or there at each one of these aspects, the huge impact that that can have on enrollment really, really, really is something to be thinking about because I think that, that you're right, that one or two percent can make that big of a, a difference um, for your main goals. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that input. And I think what we were we were discussing yesterday for to give everyone a, a insight into Gil and Kayla's musings <laughs> as we were preparing for the webinar. Even if just one of these areas was boosted and the rest remained consistent, you're talking larger numbers at the end, right? So I think it's a it's it when when you think of that full life cycle and having a, a boost in conversion at each of those phases, that's when those numbers start to compound on themselves. But it does take putting, uh, aligning that, that strategy with your overall plan. It can't be a single one-off webinar or just plopping a chat tool on your website. It has to have a strategy wrapped around it. So, so that kind of transitions us to the, to, you know, talking about some of the new communication tools to consider. Um, Kayla mentioned Conduit. So Conduit is a platform that's developed by Platform Q Education that, that aligns online engagement strategy, planning, and execution support with newer ways of communicating like webcasting and streaming and live chat. And, and when we talk about webcasting and streaming, like, like Kayla mentioned before, you know, double the amount of students year over year have watched a live stream from a college. Live, live, live webcasts 
are, are definitely a cornerstone of a, of, a, of a continuous engagement plan. And when we think about putting together a plan for an institution, that includes kind of what we would consider cornerstone events that support kind of uh, main, maintaining communication throughout the process. And we'll get into what those events are in a little bit. One of the things that's nice, and we were talking about this before we went live for the webinar today, is you know one of the features within the platform as well, which really works for admission staff that are traveling pretty heavily, or you know people want to take vacations. I mean, why would you want to do that? Uh, but you know, you don't. Some people who you want presenting may not be available to present at the specific date and time you want them to. We know that midweek. In the, in the early evening hours is the best time for hosting live presentations because that's when students are home from school. They get, once, once they get home from school, maybe it's after dinner time, but you don't necessarily want your admission staff to be working that late in the process throughout th th late every, every night of the week, right? So what we've developed is a, is a function called Simulive, which allows you to record a live presentation and present it as a live presentation later. And that can be supplemented with the live chat tools that you see at the bottom where when you're hosting a, live, a Simulive presentation, instead of a Q&A box like you have on, on WebEx here, you have a, a chat feature where students can ask questions and engage with each other and also engage with maybe student ambassadors answering questions so you can staff that. Uh, also on the platform is, is course on-demand access and, and, uh, and the ability to simulcast to social media. So really what we're talking about is a platform that combines kind of live the live TV experience with on-demand DVR and streaming, right? So all of those types of experiences that students are kind of accustomed to having access to being a part of this overall plan and overall package. And then the live chat component, like Kayla mentioned, you know, seven out of 10 students are, uh, you know, are, are, it, are, it, are happy with their chat experience. The, the, the issue is, that is use by institutions. Like, like with text messaging, students are welcome to it. It's that many institutions haven't figured out their strategy yet develop when it comes to, to utilizing texting. The same goes with chat. So it, again, it, it, means, it means kind of building out that overall strategy, which is where Conduit starts, is kind of laying out that overall strategy and then making sure that the, the tools are used correctly throughout the process. The other piece of Conduit that is, uh, is, is exciting and kind of the best, uh, you know, best way for a student to get access to the content is making sure that there's that continuous and integrated user experience. So we provide uh, within the platform a, pl a feature called Q tokens. And what Q tokens are, are a unique login identifier for each student that you want to invite to your program. So you would identify your segment of, of prospects, assign them a Q token, and then deliver that, set, that, that token via email, via SMS, either within our tools, those features are available within Conduit, to support promotion or through the, the, the tools in your CRM, either one. Uh, and then that, that token, rather than having a student have to register for a webinar, register for a chat or an open house or whatever it is, gets brought directly to that experience. So there's no login, there's no downloading, there's no lag, no waiting. It's, it's immediate access and immediately available. And like Kayla mentioned before, that's what the students want immediate gratification. They want immediate response, and this gives that to them. So we have a couple examples here just to kind of give you that idea of the cadence. You know, University of Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri S and T, and UMKC all work with and align our the conduit with their R and L strategies. And we see, you know, here that a, a pre-event example, a day of reminder, and an on-demand promotion. So these are the types of promotions that come in to support conversion and support attendance of those events by having that clear call to action and that and that that cons consistent cadence to driving students to the platform. The other area that we mentioned is 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 sim simulcasting the social media, right? Um, like Kayla mentioned, the, that you know, while Facebook's overall numbers may be declining as far as overall use, the reality is it is still a top platform for, for students researching college information, but they also use YouTube. They also are on Twitter. So you want to be a cross-platform, and, and when we're talking about various student audiences, it, a traditional undergraduate student might not be, might, might not be super active on Facebook day-to-day, but their parents are, right? So there's, there's an opportunity there for building content that engages those audiences. And with Conduit, you can make it available not only on the Conduit platform, but also available via desktop, via mobile, and via social. Once again, with no logins, no downloads, no wait, they're just all available immediately. So here's a couple examples uh, to, to, to show you kind of what it looks like from a consistent branding experience. We have, you know, Syracuse University here. They, you know, of course, Syracuse is very con uh, focused on making sure that their brand is consistent. So Syracuse orange, uh, the gold dome in the back, you have, you know, that whole experience. And they break it down. They're, they break their pages down by the admissions department, handling things like the application process and financial aid. 
And then they break it down by individual colleges because they recruit at the college level in many ways. So having presentations specifically for students throughout the process on those college pages. This is different from, you know, say, Stevens Institute of Technology. They're graduate admission focused and international focused. So they're going to have their pages be grad focused, uh, grad and, and international focused. And you see here on this page that they that when when an institution's live, it shows what presentation is live, and then it's immediately archived and available. So that even if a student misses that live presentation, if they click that that Q token link the hour after the the presentation starts, let's say they log in late because they they got the time zone messed up in their head or whatever it is. They can then they, they can still access that presentation at when they when they view it immediately after it's concluded live versus any other webinar platform. This one included, where once the webinar is done, the administrator has to download the recording, post it somewhere, make it available, which takes time and effort, and then you have to remarket that content over again, right? So the the other pieces I wanted to to make sure we look at is things like the the uh, the chat tool. So. Campus Connect is the chat tool that's built into Conduit, which you can use to host live events. But you can also extend the reach of that, of that widget to any website that your institution owns the content on. So on your admissions homepage, on your, on your contact us page, on microsites that you develop for international recruitment. This can be put on any platform. And what's nice is if you're, if you're online, it shows that you're online and says, hey, chat, chat now. If you're not online, it turns into a request for information form that's on every page that you put it on. So now you have an opportunity to identify that organic traffic that is, is coming through your website and maybe looking and hung up and looking for specific information. So you see that offline example there and the online example here, then that's a great opportunity to kind of fill in the gaps of engagement. So chat can be used for scheduled dedicated times or it could be, can be on your website as a continuously available and continuously present perspe perspective for students. So what we, what we build here is a, is a fully integrated solution that supports, like I mentioned before, continuous engagement throughout the process. So at the beginning, we see things like information sessions leading into application workshops, ultimately leading, leading to pre-orientation and pre-arrival programs. And again, when we talk about the, the features and functionality, the, the key piece, of course, is the strategic and execution support. No other webinar platform has a, a, a dedicated person to help you with, with event execution and preparation and monitoring to make sure there's, a, there's, a, there's no challenges on the back end, setting up of the social streaming. But it's also completely unified and integrated in a sense that students can access it live. They can access content on demand. They can, they can access con chat content alongside the video content which doesn't happen on kind of what, what I would consider canned one-off webinar platforms. So that's something to consider again when you, what, you know, most institutions are, are focused on their brand, they're focused on the, the ability to, uh, to, to manage that content and develop a web series. One-off solutions don't allow that while Conduit does. Think about kind of building your Netflix for the, web, for the prospective student experience. That's what Conduit allows you to do. So, I'm going to pull Kayla back in to, to, to help t with talking about some of these opportunities for uh, demand generation and, and supporting of, of conversion and yield. Um, so, Kayla, I'm going to turn the baton back over to you for a little bit, and we can, we can go from there. Yes, thank you. So, um, what does demand generation look like? Really, you want to kind of identify your prospects and then generate those unique login URLs Invite them by email and also, like, I, I know this is very um, uh, right through the path. Um, invite them through text testing and then ultimately uh, host an online open house um, across desktop, mobile, streaming. Really what this is about is providing them a pathway and an opportunity for those qualified and identified prospects to engage with you in several different ways, to know about the engagement, and then really throughout the process to be able to um, engage with you through the various uh, uh, channels, all ultimately driving action. Now we do recognize sometimes your action isn't apply now. Sometimes your action is, uh, is learn more, and that's perfectly acceptable. I think that's really great to put in your engagement strategy of if we know that these prospects are not at a point where they're making decisions, but you've identified them, how can you use that information to kind of start building demand and that demand ultimately leading to them making a, a decision that when they do apply and are accepted, that they want to move forward and ultimately increasing your yield. Yeah, and I, I would just add that the, you know what this what we're showing here is what Kayla mentioned, right? Is identifying who the prospects are, 
um, is is a key part of this, right? And what, the beauty of online engagement is you you can host an event for everybody in your inquiry pool, you know, and on let's say something like an online open house and you segment some content, or you can be focused on spe on supporting specific populations throughout the process. So when I think about the the you know the the, net, the next step of this, right? You know, once once we get past demand generation. It's completing more applications. It's boosting yield throughout the process, and that can be on you know, focusing on specifically targeted audiences. You don't you don't invite necessarily every student to an application workshop. You invite your in inquiries who have started but not yet submitted the application, or maybe have submitted an application but have missing documents. Right? Those are students that that are in the midst of the process, might be hung up somewhere in some way. Right? So having content that supports application completion, and then moving into things like helping students with affordability. You know, when, when we put together a program for an institution, I would say something related to FAFSA workshop or financing your education, depending on the, on, on, on the messaging we want to build around that, is, an, is, a, is a key event that, that supports conversion throughout the process. Then when we're, we're then moving on to yield, which would be, you know, maybe the next webinar after this one, we could talk a lot more about things like current student panels and topical chats throughout the process. But current student panels are definitely one of those areas that, that kind of overlaps both the demand gen and app completion and yield areas where students always want to hear from students, right? So a current student panel might be something that you invite your admitted students to who haven't yet deposited, but you may also want to invite juniors who are in the research phase. By the time you get to this um, wedge on the timeline, it's really about, you know, it, you're, it's really probably about where you're transitioning from from getting as many applications as you can or, or getting your application pool in, in your applicant pool focusing on yield, but you're also starting that process of demand gen for the next class, right? So it's about kind of making that content accessible to all those audiences. So I mentioned this before, um, you know, what, what, what we call our cornerstone events. So what cornerstone events are, are what we would, are kind of like an anchor at, at the various phases of the process that you would, would presumably and should drive the most, tr most engagement traffic to largest audiences. And then you have the ability to further add the ability, further segment and, and host presentations for very niche audiences or unique populations. So every good online engagement plan is going to include some type of, event, of an event similar to an online open house that drives discovery and demand. This, you may call this an online information session. You may call it a, a university overview. But it's a, it's a program to provide that, that supports discovery. Then it, we would transition to, like I mentioned before, an application workshop, and this is tr this is to drive more applications, but more so to drive completion of those applications. When we talk about that 26% lift in application completion, that's because our our partners are working specifically with their incomplete applicant pools to drive conversion at that phase of the process versus always trying to squeeze more out of, more water out of the rock from their lead list or their inquiry pool. Then we would transition, like I said, to financial aid and financing. Um, this is a great program, of course, to, to invite parents to as well, um, wh which um, is, is, and again, because of the nature of an online platform, you could host separate presentations for parents and students or a, a, a joint presentation for, for, for parents and students. It's all about the execution and bandwidth. The, and then the final piece, like I mentioned, is current student panels, and this supports excitement, enthusiasm for enrollment. This could also be part of a pre-orientation program, having orientation leaders giving a, a, a last-minute update like a showcase before. And then after all of this, kind of layering into other programs. So we're going to share a couple of just examples of, of institutions that see great results and have expanded beyond just uh, those four cornerstone events. You see Christopher Newport here. Everything in bold and underlined is, a, is, a, is what we would consider one of those cornerstone type events. But then they have career services and grad outcomes. They have STEM at a liberal arts university. You see Pitts or College. They have their four cornerstone events. But then they also have, have – how to Help Your Student Transition, a program for parents. This heat map on the right shows kind of the, the nationwide distribution of attendees uh, for, 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 for their domestic focused events throughout the year. So a great opportunity here to see how they're able to engage a, a healthy population of students from a broad variety of places without having to leave their desk. Uh, you see Stony Brook University here. They had over 1,300 live attendees who logged in throughout the year. Most Institutions year one don't have this laundry list of events and programs that 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 they're they're executing immediately when they hit the ground running. They're starting with those with those four cornerstone events and then maybe going maybe adding a couple of unique niche pro, niche programs and then adding on 
from there. But you see Stony Brook, you know, here, like I mentioned, had that 1,300, uh, 1300 students who attended their, their live events during the spring of 2019. They also had 400 attends for their, for their admitted student event, and 80% of those students actually enrolled. So this gives those, that gives those, those students an, another opportunity to explore, com compare, evaluate, and like Kayla said before, kind of feel the love from the institution throughout the process. Uh, Syracuse University, great example I mentioned before, they have targeted student calendars on you know, things like international students transfers, financial aid, and then they have dedicated events for each of their colleges to, sh to showcase unique programs at each of those institutions. And they also hosted an admitted student, uh, an online admitted student event in April where they spread their events over a couple of days and had live presentations by each college focused on yield, focused on getting students to, to make their final decisions. And I, I kind of tongue in cheekily call it their largest admitted student today they've ever hosted without having to leave their desk, right? And that's a great opportunity again for them to, and you see the, the heat map from that event, they, they were able to host an online admitted student event for students from around the globe without leaving campus to go see them, without leaving their desk and providing that, that unique opportunity for students to connect and engage. So with that, we're gonna transition shortly here to, to Q&A and there's a Q&A box that you should see on the right-hand side. But we're also activating a quick poll here. And once you've seen all the content that we've shared, if you'd like to learn about how RNL and Platform Q Education can help you build, demand, and complete more apps using continuous omni-channel engagement with the Conduit platform, just go ahead and click yes and then click submit in the, in the corner there and we'll have a member of our team reach out and, and schedule a demo or walk your theme, team through a strategy consultation. We're, we're happy to share and happy to, to connect with you on that. Uh, with that, we'll open it up for any questions that you might have um, and we'll, we, will, we can wrap it up from there. Yep. And actually, um, Gil, I just wanted to add on because I think you made some really good points there at the end of why these schools have seen such great success. And I really just want to drive that back to the beginning and the, the uh, engaging of, uh, with prospective students and how that's evolved over time and point out that it's not only just about you know, the, the great success that the school had because they didn't have to leave their, their desk. It was a great success they had because the student didn't have to leave their desk. You know, sometimes when finances are of concern, individuals are only able to look in their local area at schools. Those individuals that you could see on the heat map that were coming from many different locations, they were being able to participate and engage with us from, from you know, their own home and their own desk there as well. And again, once it was completed, I think, even though um, you know, there, many people attended a live event, it was still accessible to them for individuals who you know, maybe in their different time zone because I'm seeing all across the world. So I love that this really connects with the, you know, being accessible and flexible, giving it that authentic voice, allowing it to be personal, and uh, you know, that really driving that need for speed and combining that all in one so that that engagement really is is hitting those those main priorities and the way that students are engaging today, and not just some things that we've always done in the past. Um, because we just we know because it's evolved, we must evolve our plans as well. So I just wanted to add that because I think that, that that was a really fantastic point that you made. Awesome, thank you, Kayla. And and it looks like we do have a, a question from Drew. Drew asked, "Do you need any special hardware or software when presenting a webcast?" Um, and the answer to that is no. Um, most of the time what we would do is we, it, most institutions will leverage the built-in camera on a, on a laptop when giving some of these, these presentations. They do present, they, there are, you know, the, user, the interface has slides and a, and a presenter viewer. So there's an opportunity to kind of put that face to the name, kind of personalize that process like Kayla mentioned before. Um, and that person can be viewable simply via their webcam. Um, and then the slides are just uploaded and presented just like um, a, a traditional webinar platform. With, with the Simuli feature, what's nice about that is you can use the, plat the Conduit platform to record a presentation like normal, or you could pre-record with even something like an iPhone, right? Have a student share a story, do a testimonial. That's what uh, the Towson University example I shared before was. The students recorded their, the, a presentation uh, around campus and then sent the video file to our team and shared a uh, shared the the um, shared that video with us to post and then they host a chat alongside of that. So there's um, there's no no downloads, no software on either side, which is which is another important piece on the student experience. You know, if you think about trying to watch 
a webinar on your mobile device. If you're using a platform like Zoom or WebEx or any of those types of, of platforms, you have to download the app to view the presentation. And what, what high school student specifically is going to download the Zoom app? I, I, it's, it's pretty tricky, right? So the, 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 the opportunity here is all of it is browser-based, so there's no downloads of any kind on either side, presenter side or viewer side. That's a great question. Um, we have a question from Kim, too, as well. Um, how does reporting work? And that's a great question. So one, one of the things I mentioned before was the Q token feature. And what that Q token feature does is allows you to track who you invite to each presentation at the record level. So you know once a student logs into the platform, you, it tracks any of their activity, what pages they might view, uh, what presentations they might view. And that can really help with post-event follow-up and communication. You can craft follow-up messaging from there. Uh, and and all of that's available within the Conduit dashboard. So as a, as a, a Conduit, as a partner, uh, you receive access to the platform which, where you can access all of your past presentations, schedule chats, um, manage all of your content on your platform, and also download your presentations, or download your, your data from, your, from each of your reports and on-demand reports as well. So after each event, you get a, event of, a report of who attended live as well as within the first 24 hours. And then you also have weekly and monthly summaries of activity from there, which you can include in your CRM. We also have a feature called CRM Bridge, which allows you to, when you're taking a student, when you're taking that segmented list out of your CRM, if you export it with their unique identifier, whether it's their Slate ID or their Target X ID or whatever it is, you can load that into the platform and then any students who, who, who attend, that sticks with their record through the end of their, their activity as well. So now you can log it as an activity in your CRM to manage, per, to manage communications after an event as well. The final piece to that is we, we've also recently just uh, announced and, and, and deployed a, a conduit to Slate connector that allows our data to be delivered to Slate CRM directly using SFTP. So after each event, your scheduled report and would be available within conduit for your team to download, but also get, would get mapped directly to your, to your CRM and imported to the records automatically. So there's uh, a lot of different ways on the data side. <laughs> thank, thank you for that question. Uh, and the final question I see here is John asked, uh, is there a standard presentation length? And I would say that, you know, a lot of times you know, it, it depends on your audience and also depends on the content you're trying to distribute. Uh, you know, the, the, we've seen videos as, as short as two minutes be super impactful. We've also seen presentations in the 40 minute range uh, be, be useful for, for students to, to leverage as well. Uh, I would say the longer presentations, what our team would do is work with you to chapterize it for on-demand access. So even if it's a 40 minute presentation, the students would be able to uh, be would be able to access it and skip to specific content that that is helpful for them throughout that process. So while the live presentation is there, you can also make chapters available on demand, kind of like a a season of Netflix episodes being released at the same time. So there's all those different opportunities available. Um, and we actually we had another question that came in uh, from Melissa. Uh, what are your recommendations for meeting accessibility standards? such as closed captioning? That's a great question. And, that, and actually, that's a, something that a lot of times is overlooked with online platforms and the development of online platforms. Uh, we are VPAT compliant, which is uh, voluntary program accessibility testing compliant, for those that wanted to know that little bit of trivia. Uh, what that means is that if you, can, if you go to platformq.edu dot com slash accessibility, you can find all of our documentation for, except for, for 508 compliance for the accessibility of our tools. So uh, whether it's you know, accessing the tool as a student user, using tab browsing, um, using a screen reader, those sorts of things are all accommodated for on the back end on the software development. So that covers you from a, from a, 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 a support of students' perspective and making, it, making everything accessible. And we do also offer live and post-event closed captioning as a, as a feature within the, within the platform. So if that's, there, there's, there is a slight added service element to that for the, the human element time in, in producing it, but that means it's not a, a robot you know, reading your voice. It's, it's, uh, it's being transcribed and loaded on the back end. So that gives you the ability to have that content be available uh, and, and accessible for all students. So that's a, that's a great question, Melissa. Thank you. One more question from John, it looks like, and John's asking, um, how long does it take to go from, from 
to, to launch your first event is basically my summary of his question. And the, the, the answer is uh, we've seen programs get launched in as quickly as two weeks. And that's where this is a great partnership with RNL in the sense that, you know, some RNL programs, they take time to get going because of the need for collateral, because of the need for research. And there's a lot of work that goes into those things. And so to kind of bridge that gap between when those programs come online and can start getting to work, Conduit can get started very quickly. So we've had institutions as short as, as, as in as short as a two week time frame go from platform development to first event. It's just about the, the need of the calendar, right? Um, while the first two weeks is achievable, it's not necessarily necessary depending on your overarching plans. Um, and that's where our engagement marketing strategists would help with kind of developing that plan. If two weeks is needed, we would of course get to that that point that get to that 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 deadline but then after that we would be a little bit more strategic with what is your overall calendar look like so that everything isn't a fire drill for you right you you, you don't want every event to be a last minute push awesome well that's all i've got kayla any questions that you've got in your head that that i didn't cover that we've talked about before no i think that that covers a lot of things and uh, uh i was very excited to be joining you on this uh, this uh, webinar today. So uh, thank you for all the information you've shared with uh, with everybody as well. Awesome. Thank you so. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, RNL, for hosting. And if you need any other question, if you have any other questions, you, you see our contact information on the screen. Visit our website. We'd be happy to to answer your questions. We look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great day.